Hi. Um, as Bill said, um, I produce the 4.30 to 6. Um, we work on Good Day Chicago. Good Day Chicago is five and a half hours. So when he says that it is a, a lot of information crammed into a never-ending show, it's absolutely true. It, it, sometimes it feels like it never ends. Um, but um, I do the 4.30 to 6, which means that I have been up since 8.30 last night. So pardon me if I start to ramble. <laughs> I apologize, um, but because I just got off work. Um, but anyway, uh, my duties as far as producing goes, is there anybody, first of all, in here interested in producing? Or is, OK, great. That's good to hear. Because there's a lot of people that are not interested in it. And it's, still, it's very exciting. It's very fun. It's very creative. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. So my duties as far as producing go include story selection. So I basically start my night off when I wake up going through several publications, Chicago, Chicago Local, Northwest Indiana, um, National, USA Today, Huffington Post, things like that, gathering stories that I think are interesting to our demographic, which is women in the morning. Um, so I pull stories like that um, to put them in my newscast. I also stack my show. Does anybody know what stacking is? So you take those stories that you've selected, and then you put them in an order that makes sense. So I'll do you know, breaking news from overnight. If we had a shooting or we had uh, you know, like the Ukraine stuff is happening, that's a story that I would put in my, um, when I'm stacking first, because it's first, it's important, it's breaking, it's new, it's fresh. Um, I also write. I write um, some of the stories. I do have a writer, which is nice. Um, but I also write a majority of my hour and a half long show. I also write teases. Does anybody know what a tease is? Okay. I also, as a producer, I'm responsible for setting up teases, writing creative little catchy things to keep people hooked during commercial breaks, teasing down, keeping viewers engaged and watching my newscast. I also make graphics, lower thirds. You guys know what lower thirds, all that, fonts, all those things. I make all of those. I'm in charge of that. Try to be clever. Um, with my lines, um, do that. Um, I also, as far as stacking goes, um, style my show. If I have a, like a Ukraine story, I might have John Kelly at you know like a plasma, and there's some video rolling in it. That's also part of a producer's job to make your show visually stimulating, interesting, engaging to the viewer. Um, at time management. I'm the first one in the door, so um, I have to be very quick with my time. I have, as far as the seven to uh, the six, four thirty to seven o'clock shows are more newsy. So you have tons and tons and tons of VOs, um, lots of information, breaking things, um, not many interviews. I don't have any interviews. Um, occasionally, our six to seven will have an interview, but I'm basically responsible for news of the day just getting information, people out the door, what they want. Um, so I have, to t I have to time manage. I have like a, a plan of action. I come in at 10.30 at night. I check my email. I start looking through our wire system. You know, I start stacking. I know that I have to have my 4.30 to 5 o'clock show done by midnight so I can move on to my 5 to 6. And I have to have that all done by 3 when my director comes in. Then I have to start writing. So you just have to, I have to bullet point as far as like hit my times so I can accomplish my goal, which is get my show on air clean. And crisis management. As a producer, you are in charge of the newscast. When you walk in the door, uh, or when you walk in the control room door, you sit down, that's you. You are, you are going for it. If there's a live shot that crashes and you lose two minutes of your time, you have to figure out how to make it up. Um, if you have breaking news, you have to in, in, or, you know, put that in your show in an order that makes sense. You have to move stories around. You have to um, you know, control your weather people and um, hit your commercial breaks. There's things called click points, which are um, when you get into bigger markets, they make more sense. But you, you have to hit a certain time, your commercial break, because it you know, counts the people that are watching. So there is a lot that goes into producing. You also have to control your reporters and, you, and your anchors. And you know, if they have questions, you have to be quick. If they have a question about a story, uh, you have to be able to answer it in a second. There is tons you have to do as a producer. It sounds overwhelming, um, but 
it's a fun job, and I have to tell you that if you're worried about, you know, you're sitting in a classroom, watching the clock, you're dragging, you know, when you're a producer, you walk in the door and it's like your shift is over in a minute. It's like that. What? It really is. I wish I could tell it tell you that I'm lying, but I'm not. That's, uh, there's sometimes I look at the clock, oh my gosh, it's four o'clock, where did my time go? You know, I've been here five and a half hours, but I still feel like I have so much to do and no time to do it. So like I said, my show start, or my day, my shift starts at 10.30 at night, so I go to bed around one, two, I push it. Usually I only get, I don't know, six hours of sleep, five and a half hours of sleep. So I pretty much just run on energy and adrenaline. Um, my 4.30 or 10.30 to 4, p, 4 a.m. is my show prep. That's when I'm putting it together, setting it up, building graphics, ordering video. And then 4.30 to 6, I'm in the show, in the booth, controlling what's going on, crisis management, time management, um, all of that. So how did I get here? Um, hard work. I went to Columbia across the street. You guys know where that is, I'm sure. Um, I graduated in three and a half years. Um, I just busted my butt. I worked full time. I also had internships. I made the dean's list. Um, I just worked my butt off and really used my time at school to learn, to meet people, and to just get myself ready to go. Because I knew if I was going to you know, if I was going to make it drag on, I wouldn't get a job because the it's very hard to it's it's hard to get a job if you're banking on getting in this market. You need to, like Bill said, it's very important to be open to moving around because if you're not, it really limits you. If you are, then you're able to move and bounce and learn and grow. I mean, I had when I was in Rockford, I had my bumps and bruises. Everybody does. It's kind of baptism by fire. Um, but now I, you know, take my time and those mistakes I made in those little markets, now I can use them when I'm in this, you know, market three in Chicago in my home, you know, and able to put together a clean newscast in this market for, you know, millions of people to watch. Um, internships <clears throat> were very important to where I got. I met a lot of people through internships. Um, I did different internships because I wanted to make sure that I was kind of like the renaissance journalist and I could do anything. Um, I interned at, my first internship was at Q101 in the Loop, which Q101 isn't around anymore. Um, well, it's several format changes if you listen. It was the alternative station here. Um, and I did, I worked in the marketing department just so I can learn, um, you know, you get a lot of press releases when you're a producer, especially when you're in a small market because there's not a desk person that's filtering through all of these press releases, you have to, to do it. And these people contact you, um, there's no barrier. So I knew that was important for me to learn, you know, that aspect, the marketing realm. And then I also love sports, big Bears fan, Cubs fan, Hawks, all that. Played softball, was a high school athlete. Um, so I worked for the Chicago Bandits. And again, I did marketing and promotions just to learn the sports aspect of it to learn how to write sports, um, to understand that side, that aspect. And then I also interned at CBS2 right here, WBBM, in um, the investigative department. I was Pam Zeckman's intern. Does anybody know who Pam Zeckman is? She's awesome. I learned a ton from her. So if you guys are interested in investigations, um, reporting, producing, that is a great internship to go for, especially because I'm a producer. Um, I need to be creative and I need to be creative in my writing and that's what they see is your creative writing, you know. So I try to be, um, you know, like cr descriptive and say things that, you know, I'm a producer or, you know, I'm an engaging producer excited for a new opportunity, buzzwords. That's what I inject into my cover letter. Um, as far as my reel goes, I didn't need one after I got into Rockford. You know, I did a producing reel, but I also had on-air experience, so I wedged at the back end because I knew I wanted to be a producer. At the back end, I put my my um, anchoring stuff, but just a little bit. You know, I did um, an A block from a newscast. Then when I went to Milwaukee, um, they had my my Rockford. I did one Rockford newscast. They watched it and liked it. To get to Chicago, I didn't send in. They didn't see my work. They just 
went with you know, talking to me, my writing tests, my references, my track record. So it just, it's different from market to market. But as far as like when your first one goes, you just want to try to stand out because there's a lot of stuff. And then like when you go to an interview, what do you bring? Do you bring all that with you there? I always bring an extra copy because I'm just anal. Like <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Wow. <laughs> just, I'm very, you know, like I, I'm very, you know, a perfectionist and I'm also, really organized, which is a good producer's really organized and a perfectionist. Um, so I always have a spare copy of everything, just you never know. Go ahead. Um, so do you use like guerrilla marketing? Um, I mean, I don't, I know what you're talking about. I learned when I was in my internships, we guerrilla marketed, but as far as in TV, you can't really, do that. It's more just being, you know, like LinkedIn and um, connecting with other professionals through other professionals. But you can't, in a way, I guess you can guerrilla market yourself by sending out your resume everywhere. You know, if you do that, I know a lot of people, especially reporters, will send out their resume to 200 stations, just even if they aren't hiring, just to get themselves out there and their 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 um their work. As far as a producer, you can do the same thing. If there's a market you really want to get into or you really want to try to gun for, just send them stuff. You know, I know a guy who, um, he just, he worked with me in Rockford and he got a job in Milwaukee at the Fox affiliate because he sent his resume. There was no job. The news director's like, hey, I like your resume. Thanks for it, you know. And then he's like, why don't you come up sometime? He dropped everything, went up there, met with them, and then in a month and a half, when there was a job opening, he got the job. Wow. So in that sense, yeah, you can kind of like guerrilla market yourself like that. But if you're, you have to dance a fine line because some news directors don't like being pushed. You know, if you are too aggressive, that might turn them off. You have to have a kind of a perfect balance of like aggression, show that you're a go-getter, but not that you're not mature enough to handle a job. That makes sense. Right, yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have anything? Yeah. Okay. So, for, for working for Fox, like how, how does that really feel? Like you working for Fox? Just have to be like, I mean, it, it feels good to be home. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's just nice to be home. I, I can say that. I mean, I worked at two CBS affiliates and a Fox affiliate, and the affiliate, you know, it's not like Fox News. People think Fox News and they think Bill O'Reilly is next door. Bill O'Reilly has nothing to do with us. It's just, you know, a logo that they bought the rights to the station. So we're Fox owned and operated, but it doesn't mean like you're watching, you know, Bill O'Reilly. It's local news. It's local tailored to the Chicagoland area and what you guys are interested in and what you want. So it's, I mean, it's just nice to be able to inform people of what I think is important and what I think everyone else should know before they leave in the morning. <laughs>